guess who's feeling less than optimal today? <laughs> What's up guys, welcome back. I've got my giraffes on today. I got this dress off of a an online purveyor called Wolf and Badger that lets you shop a bunch of boutiques all over the world. I also got this really chaotic jumpsuit that I cannot wait to wear. You guys will know it when you see it. It's next level. I got it because it's got giraffes all over it and some at some point when my baby was a very, very baby baby, we decided that giraffes were his thing. And so this is in honor of my Simon boy and his uh, unbeknownst passion for giraffes. So um, today guys, I'm calling this an overcompensate with me. It's a get ready with me, but like we're gonna go in because um, I need this to come up to this and this, you know? I just really need it all to be elevated and in that sense, uh, make me feel better from a health standpoint because I, I'm on an immunosuppressant. Come on, COVID vaccine, you heard me. Yeah, I think that it's made me just have this like extra long cold. It's really lovely. So I'm on DayQuil, which I know I have a lot of fans out there who love me on DayQuil because I'm just like a lot. And uh, I also have, I have this whole box of Canadian makeup that was sent to me by a viewer that facilitated me basically, you know, buying this. And it's stuff that I can't get in America. It's mostly the brands Quo and Elise Wattier. And I've tried a lot of it, but not all of it. And I just thought it would be fun to do like a big chaotic Canadian makeup get ready with me. I also have some feelings on some of these things that I'll be able to share with you, but some of it's gonna be kind of first impression style and we're just gonna do the most. Oh, also, I should shout out the particular viewer, Ludo Strike, AKA Strikeadelic. I will link his social media down below. I know he has like a, a YouTube channel that may or may not be well maintained, but he definitely maintains his Instagram. Um, just some really cool, like rainbowy looks, very, very cool stuff. So. Thank you again, Ludo, for sending me this stuff. And um, I'm gonna move you all in. Let's go ahead and get started. Yes. Okay. Maybe we will also um, use the new Bite Beauty upswing stuff today too. We'll see. We'll see. We'll just, we'll just do a lot. All right, I'm gonna start with the liquid foundation from Quo. Um, this is a Korean formula and it is honestly kind of miraculous. My understanding is that Quo, kind of already existed for a long time as the house brand for the drug mart. Oh no, Shoppers Drug Mart, I think is what it's called in Canada, which I've never been to. This is just what I've learned. And that, you know, it didn't have like the most amazing reputation just because it was kind of just a house drugstore brand, but that they've rebranded and re-released and reformulated. And I actually really, really like this foundation. Is it like the perfect shade match? No, but we're going to, um, we're gonna make it work. I've worn this a couple of different days. It has great fidelity. It has a lot, I think it has a lot of silicone in it. <laughs> and so, um, you know, if your skin is sensitive to that, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't go for this, but it has like, incredible smoothing dry down because of that. And the concealer it does too. What shade is this? Shake well before use. That seems to always be my shade. All right, so I'm sure that you can see a line of, yeah, you can totally see a line of demarcation, but look at that texture. It's a really good texture on the skin. And I think that the concealer is a little bit lighter. So hopefully it'll help us cover the distance. Man, I, you know, I'm kind of leaning into this weird voice that I have. So here is the Quo Miracle Cover Concealer. And again, I have no idea what the shade is. Oh, this is Porcelain N1. And for two products from the same brand, sometimes concealers and foundations don't really agree with each other. This is like a perfect match formula wise for that foundation. Cause the foundation has like medium to buildable coverage and this is pretty full coverage. And they both have the same really like lovely silicone-y bouncy finish to them. It does a pretty darn good job of camouflaging all of my nonsense and even though I haven't gotten my Curology in the mail yet, 
the um the light stem i know i keep talking about it but man oh that light stem is so satisfying you use it like one time and then the next morning it's like you scared off all your acne it's amazing i love that thing also in the vein of talking about very expensive products like that. Um, the Sephora sale's coming up, yay! I always try and couch this in the awareness that like a lot of individual brands have sales all the time. Like Pat McGrath is running a sale like right now. She runs sales all the time. So just be aware that even like the most expensive, most coveted stuff, a lot of times you can get it on sale not at Sephora, but I am still going to be doing my semi-annual what's in my cart and what I recommend for the Sephora sale. Just, you know, I would normally do it, but I'm like extra excited for it this year because Sephora has rolled out so many cool new brands. Black owned brands and affordable brands and inclusive, just like, just really, really cool stuff. I feel like Sephora has gotten like a second wind and not just being, and I mean, Ulta is doing a great job too, honestly. I don't pay enough attention to Ulta, but Sephora is in like multiple countries and Ulta isn't if I'm, if I'm correct. Either way, wow, wow, wow. I almost look like I slept well last night without a lot of um, medication. <laughs> you gotta love covering the gamut though of <laughs> like Shantikai and then like Canadian drugstore makeup. Like, I think that's pretty cool. I think that's pretty cool, Khaki. Thank you, Khaki. Okay, so Ludo sent me these, which are the Quo Dewy Cheek Tints. And I'm gonna skip on this today just because it is a little bit too like liquidy for me. It, it just kind of pushes the makeup around and it just doesn't agree basically with the, um, the texture that I already have on my skin. But these guys, on the other hand, these are really good. So these are the Featherweight Cream Blushes. I have the shade Pure. And this one doesn't have a sticker on it. So, oh, heavenly. Somebody said, can you please hold these things up long enough and then don't move so that I can screenshot them? I'm like, they're all listed underneath the video. Come on. Sorry, I'm the worst. Okay, so we're going in with Pure and it's gonna give me a really nice rosy tan kind of blush color here. Mm. And you were warned up front in this video that this was going to be the most. And um, <laughs> this is kind of, it's sort of like my, uh, my holiday collab that I did with, God, you know, Buffalo Beauty Boy and Rainier and Kyla and uh, Hannah Louise Poston and uh, Amanda. I hope I'm not forgetting anybody. Am I forgetting anybody? I might, oh, Kate, obviously, uh, State of Kate, where like, I feel like I'm the most myself when I can just kind of cut loose in a video and just play, but they honestly like don't get as much traction because they're not as useful. But I, th I feel like the people who subscribe, subscribe for that kind of content where they're just like, LOL. I love khakis, like really chaotic energy. I was um, sometimes, sometimes, you know, you Google yourself, right? I'm not going to claim to not be a little bit vain or curious about what, you know, people might think about me and my content. And so I will Google sometimes whether or not someone has posted about me on Reddit, because if you ever want someone's video to get a lot of attention, go post it on Beauty Guru Chatter. Like to me, the nasty comments and like the people being critical, it's totally inconsequential to the amount of traction that a video can get if you post it on that, that message forum. And I don't actually know the rules. Honestly, like anytime someone has been like, hey, I saw your you know video get posted on there, it gets taken down and I don't know why, it's like impossible possible not to violate their terms of service. I don't know what their posting rules are, but um, every time I have managed to like, you know, someone post something on there, like one of my videos, yes, it gets trashed by the comments, but it also attracts a whole bunch of new people to my channel. Regardless, I always kind of, you know, am curious whether somebody felt compelled to post something to Reddit. And um, I don't know, I, I stumbled across my name a couple of times and they were comparing me to other like very calm channels. And they were like, yeah, you know, Khaki does these really like, um, natural looking sort of dewy makeup looks. They're like, but her, her energy is kind of chaotic. And I'm like, I, you know, I'm glad that someone would come into my channel um, with that understanding. You know, don't come in here thinking that I am going to be uh, a background for your meditations. Although who knows? 
There are a lot of people who say that um, they listen to me while they're falling asleep at night. Apparently I'm not too much for a lot of people. So you never, you just never know when it's gonna come out. So I'm going in with Heavenly here and it is the rosier tone. I feel like it's less pigmented than the other one. Sometimes that's kind of what you encounter with drugstore stuff is not so much that it's like a bad formula, but like they'll be kind of inconsistent between formulas as far as pigmentation or payoff is concerned. And so, I do like to test more than one shade a lot of times. I did just make a big order on Ulta of a bunch of different cream cheeks from the drugstore section so that I can kind of give y'all a good roundup rundown of drugstore cream blushes because I do want to enrich my channel with different price points and I don't think that you need to really spend a whole lot of money to get a really good product. It's just usually about the experience and about the, the packaging and stuff and usually like maybe some skincare ingredients that differentiate a luxury product from a drugstore product, but the drugstore has really stepped their game up very like in the last couple of years. So um, that's like just crazy beautiful. I, I just really, really like that texture on the skin. Like it's just, it's awesome. It really, really looks great. That concealer is excellent. I could probably use it right there. Hmm. Yeah. Hello. Oh, and then there is also this Quo highlighter. This is Champion, um, the Glow Getters Illuminating Drops. And even though this is technically that same liquidy formula that I didn't want to use in the blush, I'm going to try it in the highlighter, mainly because it's like a perfect lavender. And y'all know how I feel about a lavender highlight. It's a perfect lavender, you know? If you like a verging on icy kind of lavender shade. Ooh, yes. Yep. I'm telling you guys, you're sleeping on Quo. <laughs> Not that you can get it in America. I don't think that you can. It's hilarious to me how like close Canada is and yet what a world away it is in terms of like what you can get in the way that they're governed because you know It's a British colony at the end of the day the Canadian stock market for example Doesn't do any kind doesn't allow any of the like sketchy stuff that we do in America like you know uh, Buying on on margin or what like a shorting or anything like that like you know you don't just get these like crazy uh, scandals like we like we got um, but you know for some reason America just can justify all of this stuff because it's enriching the people who are already insanely rich whereas Canada's like can we just not and also how about some universal health care and America's like nah what is this ooh a lipstick okay it doesn't smell like anything I don't think although I did just get it on my nose this is a really ooh it's super sheer. Since we are really going for it today, I'm gonna use that. That's pretty. Ooh, I think you can get Lee Swatier in America. You just can't get Quo. But yeah, the only thing that disappointed me was the eye products. They're just not, they're just not that great. I, this this Lee Swatier, um, what is this? Meteorite? I don't know. It's a it's like a liquid glitter. And it's got a brush on it, which surprised me. I thought it was gonna be like a doe foot. And like it's fine. We'll probably like work it into the look today, but it's not the easiest or the more the most like rewarding, <laughs> you know. It's like <laughs> I don't know. I need some of those like sound effects. <laughs> do 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 on the recorder. And then there were these. These are fard cremes. Um, these are the cosmic cream shadows from Quo. This one is ooh. All right, okay, that's not bad. It's okay, right? A nice little uh, blushy copper. And I think I have another one. Yeah, I have another one of those. And this is in the shade Dark Matter. Okay, that's also incredibly pretty. Can you focus please? There you go, that's actually gorgeous. I think I might start with that one. Move my mirror in. Your girl's a little hard of seeing. Galactic Princess, Xenon Who. Have y'all got, have, have y'all guys, <laughs> have y'all guys watched Kid 90 yet on, uh, on the Hulus? 
So, okay, it's kind of funny how that like, I feel like it kind of mixes with the concealer foundation complexion situation that I had on and you lose all the glitter, but I don't hate it still. It's just a really, really pretty kind of taupey color. It doesn't really stay glittery, so we'll just put some more glitter on top. How about that? We'll go with the, the, the Lee Swatier one. But yeah, Kid 90, I kind of initially, like, I don't know, I had different expectations of it than what it ended up being. But basically, Soli Moonfry, who played Punky Brewster, kept like a video diary of her entire adolescence. Okay, that's actually kicking butt. That is so pretty on brown eyes. Holy mackerel. Oh, ho, ho, ho. let's just, let's just chase that feeling, Lise Watier, shall we? And it is incredibly fascinating because this very like tight knit group of actors in Hollywood, you know, in the 90s that are all literally 10 years older than me. So it was just a little bit before my age of consciousness. It's super, super fascinating. I found it to be really interesting. You know, it's everything from her, you know, burgeoning into a woman in the public eye to all of the people who were in her cohort. Everyone from Leonardo DiCaprio, who you could definitely say is a, a large and lifelong success, and then all of the other, a lot of people who, you know, ended up a little bit either washed up or it chronicled all of that and I found it to be incredibly fascinating and also it just gave me this like overwhelming um saturation of nostalgia <laughs> it was a, a very very cool very very cool documentary okay I'm not able to really preserve the glitter you know as it builds it really doesn't want to do what i want it to do which is i want it to be like the vesca where you just keep piling it on and it just keeps looking like wet and gorgeous it just doesn't want to like cap out and then also stay really glittery so what shall we do i mean i have my pat mcgrath palette right here what say we just <laughs> go for the most while we're doing the most today. So what color have I not, I didn't really use that like bright freaking gold before. There we go. Yep. Yep. Sorry, Lise Watier. The mothership has landed. The obsession is real. I bought two more lip glosses. And then I also really appreciate you guys' recommendations on stuff to try from Pat McGrath. It really, really is an instant addiction. You just, once you get this stuff in your hands, it's just magical. All right, I'm gonna take a little bit of a shimmery brown and kind of build the crease where that one kind of fell off. Heck yes. Cool that I can like pretty much pick up the same shades that I was just working with in this palette and, you know, pick up right where I left off and keep running. Just keep running. I've actually made a lot, I've made so many orders for new makeup recently that I can't even keep track of them all. I know I have an Ulta order coming. I ordered from Phytosurgeons because I keep hearing such great things about their uh, formulas and so I ordered a bunch of stuff from them. What else did I order? Oh, I ordered the new Bare Minerals stuff. I'm not on their PR list, not yet anyway. Oh, oh my God, Rare Beauty reached out to me and asked if they could send me PR. I was like, oh my God, I've made it. <laughs> that was pretty cool. So I think they're sending me something new. That's really exciting. Some really fun, exciting things coming down the pike on my channel. Um, I'm gonna take a little bit of that matte lavender that I'm obsessed with and just kind of fill this in a little. <laughs> There's this problem and it is called, I don't clean my mirror often enough. I don't know how it gets stuff all over it. I don't really know like what's on it. It must just be like finishing spray or something. <laughs> it does make it a little hard to see exactly what I'm doing. And, um, and then we're gonna put glitter on it because <laughs> I can. Doing the most. And I'm doing the most for my health. Let's be clear. 
I'm not exaggerating, guys. It's just a pleasure. I, I cannot speak for all of the Pat McGrath palettes because, you know, I think that this colorway specifically spoke to me. I know that they're all really beautiful in formula, but I don't think that I'm gonna go buy all of them because I just don't think that I would get as excited about like a green or a blue or something. But like, <laughs> the palette completes me. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> there is also this green powder. I used it in another video. Um, I, I mean, you know, why not? It's like a color canceling powder. Probably not supposed to put green powder underneath your eyes, but I don't care. Definitely supposed to put it on the redness of me forehead. You only learn by doing, right? It's a little green. It's a little bit green, fam. But I think it's cool. I think it's cool that that exists, you know? Oakley Doakley. We're just gonna go in with the Bite Beauty Upswing Eyeliner, if I can find it. It's a liquid eyeliner, which is like danger, 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 back away slowly, but I'm doing it anyway. I'm doing it anyway. All right, that's actually like a really pretty eye look. I'm actually taking a little bit of this Daniel Sandler, just cause this is <laughs> the little compact I happen to have in front of me of his highlighter. And I'm gonna use that on my inner corner. All right, let's see how far I get. I might, I might quit halfway through. <laughs> I hate this. I hate liquid eyeliner. Guys, I, I hate liquid eyeliner. I hate it. I hate it. I'm gonna wait for that to dry and then I'm gonna scrape it off and we're just gonna go in with the regular brush because I really, I hate liquid eyeliner. It's like the reward does not match the effort. My neck is just a completely different color than my face. I realized that the thing that I want people to leave my channel with, I mean, other than a good laugh and maybe some knowledge about makeup is unconditional confidence. I keep posting these selfies of me right when I wake up in the morning and I'm like really sick and I my hair is all crazy looking and my skin's all dry and I am like in my wrinkled ass robe and I'm like still sexy. Because if you don't remind yourself that you still have the right to feel fabulous even when you don't feel fabulous. Or if you're, God forbid, waiting for permission to feel sexy and to feel yourself and to just acknowledge that you're really gosh darn awesome and really cute, then um, you know, you'll be waiting your whole life. So you, uh, you have my permission if you need anyone's permission, but the answer is you don't need anyone's permission and you should wake up every day, look at yourself in your little phone mirror and be like, I look fantastic, okay? I am the cutest. Even if that's not what you're actually feeling, if you keep telling yourself that, it's a lot better than sitting there and telling yourself, I feel like garbage, because then it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. So reverse it. Flip the script on that negative self-talk. Oh my God, brow moose. You saved my day every time. And then um, I said we were gonna use the upswing mascara. So let's, let's do it. I do like this, but is it a tubing mascara? And no. So, you know, it'll never make the final cut for me. The final cut pro. Oh my God. Look at the glitter on my eyes. I'm obsessed with that. I'm salivating over my eyes right now. So I bought a swimsuit recently. I am so grateful that I'm going to have a freaking pool going forward. You know, I lived in a neighborhood previous to this that had a community pool, but that got closed during the pandemic, understandably. But I mean, it's not like they lowered our HOA bill just because we couldn't use the pool. This is a really beautiful mascara. I mean, look at that. It's absolutely gorgeous. But like, you know, it's gonna smudge. <laughs> it's not waterproof and it's not, a, it's not a tubing formula. It's just a really pretty mascara. All I wanted all last summer when I was so pregnant was to just be in a body of water. But not only was our pool closed, 
but there was like no water in Texas because it just, you know, didn't want to rain very much. And when it gets in insanely, incredibly hot in Texas, the natural bodies of water that aren't like flowing get neurotoxic blue green algae on the surface that will kill your dog. So the place was just out to get me. It was time to move on. So yeah, now you can catch me floating this summer. I'm gonna be floating a lot. For all of you having anxiety about like kid pool, my mother-in-law is um, funding a pool fence being uh, being installed. So that will help all of us sleep better at night. I know that I know that there are plenty of you who like all of your all of your alarms went off. Mine did too. Don't worry. Okay, my cheeks are not very bright. Let's go with lips, and then we will make a decision on what else to layer on my cheeks. But like, come on, with these eyes. Come on. It's honestly, like, I don't think that anybody needs to be really proficient in makeup in order to enjoy it, but there is something to be said for getting good enough at it that when you sit down to make yourself feel better by like applying a fun face of makeup, you can accomplish what you set out to do. That's about the only like, that's where I, the threshold that I wanted my skills to get to was like, I have this vision in my head. I just want to be able to do it. And I feel like my skills have gotten that far and now I don't have to try anymore. So Ludo sent me a lip liner that I will now locate. Ooh, actually he sent me two. So there was one, this one's called Rose Parfait. I know that parfait means perfect, but I think of it as a parfait, like, you know, an ice cream parfait or a yogurt parfait. And I'm thinking of a parfait with roses and that's a weird thought. Dooby dooby doo. I wish you guys could see my desk. <laughs> it's embarrassing. I think that this is the one that I will end up going with just cause it's more, it's called ginger. It's more like brown. I like a brown lip liner. Yeah, the Rose Parfait, I mean, that's, she's, she's pinky pink pink. And that has a place in my routine, but with that plummy lip color that I wanna go for, I think this is gonna work. Let's get this like gross white line off my lips. Ooh, yes, Ginger. Mm, I like that color very much. And this is uh, this is Lee Swatier. This is not um, Quo. A very um, bye, middle ground kind of creaminess. Um, sometimes you end up with like really, really soft, like the khaki lip liner from Thrive is really, really soft. And then you end up with like really hard ones. Sometimes hard lip liners, like the MAC lip liners are really hard and um, this is right there in the middle. It's pretty creamy. All right, let's do this. This was the uh, this was the product that just decided to pitch itself off of my desk. This is the shade Kate, I think. Fondant lip color. Oh, come through. Ooh. That color, wait a second. That reminds me of the Shantikai color. Let me see if that's a dupe. I like that formula. It's actually a little bit thicker. Like it doesn't have that super slippy thing that makes it feel like it's gonna wear off really fast. Like it feels like it's gonna have some fidelity. Oh, mmm. Ooh, it does have a little bit of a smell and a little bit of a flavor, I wanna say. It's like a little bit like fruity. I don't mind it though. So the redder one is the Chantecai and the pinker one is uh, Kate from Lee Swatier. I don't know how much the Lee Swatier one is, but like this is a very similar formula. I actually kind of prefer this formula. It's a little bit creamier. It feels like it's committing a little bit more. Like it's on my side, it's in my corner. It wants to be worn a little longer. Okay, now that that has been accomplished, let's Add just a little bit more blush to bring it together. I want to go with one of my melt blushes. I'm pretty sure that we have one that pulls pretty plummy. Yes, Daydreamer. That's a little bit tan. I still say we go for it. Yeah, that works. There were plenty of y'all watching that were going, when are we going to get to the fjords? Are we there yet? Next up. Fjords. 
For the record, Dayquil does make me feel a little bit tipsy. So if you're watching this and you're like, oh, like, is she okay? No, I'm not okay. And that's the reason we're overcompensating today. All right, I'm gonna move y'all out and we're gonna talk about these products real quick. So, um, yes, my face is a different color than my neck. Okay, we're just gonna own it. I don't feel like blending it in and getting makeup all over my shirt. Actually, it's a dress. I would compare the Quo liquid foundation most closely, maybe, to somewhere between the Hydromaniac and the Glossier Perfecting Skin Tint. Yeah, it's not quite as dewy as either one of them, I guess. It, it still has like that really great blurring finish, but it's just not as hydrating as the Hydromaniac. And if you're going to, like if you're in Canada and you get this foundation, get the concealer too, because it literally is like just an enriched version as far as coverage is concerned of the foundation and they go really, really beautifully together. Very much enjoy these. If ever they're available in America, you know, I'll let you guys know, but um, I, I do, I really think these are phenomenal. Phenomenal, especially for the price. Um, I didn't, you know, put these on because I really felt like they would kind of mess my whole makeup look up. I don't like the dewy cheek tint, but I did really enjoy the uh, featherweight cream blush from Quo. That is really beautiful. And I did also really like this Glow Getter Illuminating Drops in the shade Champion. It looks kind of um, pearly pink, but it's actually kind of lavender when you dispense it. It's incredibly beautiful. Eyes. Um, I was kind of underwhelmed just because these sort of they promise a lot. When you look at that in the tube, you're like, oh wow, you know, that's a really pretty liquid glitter. It's gonna give me this really lovely payoff. I guess what I'm realizing is that this is actually a really difficult thing to formulate. Maybe why we end up paying so much for liquid glitter or cream glitter things that we put on our eyes that do end up giving us like a really satisfying payoff is because for whatever reason, the less expensive versions just don't cut it. I also tried some from e.l.f. that like didn't cut it, but like the Natasha Denona ones are amazing, you know? These just kind of, you know, are a pass for me uh, as far as what I expected from them. But, you know, I just, I, I pulled out the nuclear option, which is the Pat McGrath palette and managed to get what I was going for. The lip liners are beautiful. I don't know if I would ever kick a lip liner out of bed. I've never met one I didn't like, but I do really love this ginger shade. This is really, really pretty from Lise Watier. And then this lipstick from Lise Watier. Oh my gosh. I am a huge fan of this. This might be, this might be my favorite thing actually from the entire discovery today, like all the new products that I was trying. This is really, really beautiful. I could use this on my cheeks. It is an incredibly flattering color for me. <laughs> Just this really, really perfect kind of neutral berry plum color. I'm a huge fan of that. So Ludo, I know that you have a knack for color theory and I know that you picked this shade out of probably a menagerie of shades, knowing what I like. And I just wanna tell you, especially, I mean, everything across the board in here, even if I didn't like the formula, I just wanna say thank you for really nailing all of the shade values. Like all of these are the colors that I love to wear and this, this, is perfect, so thank you. Oh my God, there's a light. <laughs> oh my God, I just happened to open this. So I think that the um, Gerard Cosmetics does this too, where they have a mirror on the side of it and then they have a light so that you can like, you know, apply this anywhere. I'm gonna go ahead and say it. I think that that's brilliant. <laughs> You know, it's a gimmick, but it's a really fun gimmick. Oh, a waterless brush cleaner. Cute! I thought that this was gonna be a finishing spray, but it's a brush cleaner. That's awesome. So yeah, as I'm broadening my horizons here, I, you know, I'm just grateful to have been able to try a bunch of Canadian makeup, and I'm glad that it turned out as well as it did, and I'm glad that you guys could come and hang out with me as I use a video today to cheer myself up. I mean, I'm not in bad spirits, I'm just feeling physically ill. But uh, but yeah, just doing the most today. I appreciate you guys being here. And uh, if you enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if y'all did. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. <laughs>